Hello, and welcome to the Tech Done For You interview series. I'm your host, Gina Decker, and I am the tech guru. And I'm here with Meredith Eisenberg, and I'm really excited that we are going to be talking about email lists today, and specifically keeping them happy and buying from you. <laughs> That's the whole point of having an email list. So thank you so much, Meredith, for joining us today. Oh, I'm happy to be here. I'm excited about this topic and sharing what I know. Yay. Yes. And I love sharing good information. This is juicy information. So anybody, whether you have a list or not, if you're interested in doing online marketing, email lists is, it just comes with the territory. So I'm happy that you're, you're here to talk about this. And for those of you who are not familiar with Meredith, I'm going to go ahead and read off her bio. Meredith is the founder of Solo Biz Hacker, where she helps people change their lives and change the world by sharing what they already know and love to do with others. Solo Biz Hacker is a startup lab for people who are passionate about making a difference and who want to experience the freedom of entrepreneurship without the overwhelm and distraction. Along with her co-founder, Jasper Blake, Meredith co-hosted a top-rated iTunes podcast, Paycheck to Passion, and is author of The Escape Plan. She is an active campaign certified consultant. So welcome, Meredith. I am so honored to have you speak today. Yeah, as I said, I'm really excited to be here talking with you about this because this is one of those topics that people don't think about, but it really can make a huge difference. It's true. It really does make a huge difference. And, you know, I'm just thinking about myself. You know, I did not come from an entrepreneur background. And so I was an academic for many, many years. I did freelance editing. I had a job actually in college administration for many years. So, um, you know, I learned this trial by fire <laughs> and, you know, my email has um, grown over the years, my email list, but it really kind of took a lot of effort and mm -hmm. focus. <laughs> and so mm -hmm. I, I know that, you know, shortcuts are really awesome. And so I'm, I'm glad that you're going to talk about uh, some of the mistakes today, but also, you know, good things for people to do. So let's jump right in. Um, you've been working with clients on email marketing for over a decade now. Forever. Yes. Yeah. Forever. Well, it's a long time. It's a long time. So uh, what are the things that separate those who succeed uh, with email marketing and those who just never gain traction? Well, it's, 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 it's one thing mainly, and it's consistency. It's, it's really, and it's consistency in a lot of different areas. Like the first is, and I'm guilty of this, and so I can say this, right? It's consistency in your message. Like really, you know, sending out the same types of emails day in and day out that have the same message, that you're not changing things around all the time. So people get used to hearing you, seeing you being with you, you know, all of that, like Ellen, who just popped on here, does a really good job of that. She has a daily newsletter and it's in the same format every day. So people get used to seeing it. The clients that I see that don't ever really get the traction, one of the big things is they don't really have their mind made up about what they're doing. And so they're changing it all of the time. And it's almost like they give up in the moment before they were going to be successful. You know, it's like, oh, oh, Meredith, I want to do something totally different. Wait, no, ah, wait a second. Don't do that yet. You're almost there. You know, their, their, their list is like 850 people. I'm like, no, 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 just keep going because you're about to get a big jump. And I know you've worked really hard for this first little bit, but it will get better and it'll get faster. So that's number one is the consistency in the sending the messages, not going weeks and weeks and months and months between them. Because what happens, people are afraid to email their lists because they think people are paying attention. And they really aren't. Like the average open rate is about 20%. So you can send people messages every single day and it's like sending it once a week 
by the time people actually get around to opening it and all of that. What happens when you send a message and then it's three months and you send another message and then it's six months and you send another message is people forgot that they ever subscribed to your mailing list in the first place. And so then what happens is they unsubscribe because they don't remember you. And so then it's really hard to keep the people on the list. And the second thing is integrity. So you need to actually give people what you promise them. So, you know, it's really easy to get all sort of sucked into the whole marketing hype cycle and say, you know, I will give you my super secret recipe to creating a seven figure business overnight. Well, okay, I couldn't send that. I mean, I couldn't do it with a straight face anyway, but like I really couldn't send that because I haven't created a seven figure business. I've been involved in a lot of six figure businesses as a coach and, you know, as an online business manager and all kinds of ways, but I have not created a seven figure business. So I could not tell somebody how to do that. But people promise that stuff and then you meet them in real life and they're like eating their tuna fish at the conference because they don't have any money. And you're like, really? Where did you spend all that money? Where did that come from? You know, I, and, and so if you're going to promise people three steps to do X, make sure that they're really three steps to do X and that you've done them yourself and that they work. Same thing with recommending products. Make sure you kind of at least talk to the person you've sort of checked them out. You know that what you're recommending is good and you're not just sending them some schlocky schlock schlock PLR schlocky schlock schlock that, you know, might not even work and isn't even written by an English speaker because that stuff comes back to haunt you. And so people who get really involved in the glitter and, and all the, oh, I'm going to send out all this stuff. And then their list just leaves them because they're not really giving them value. So that's the other thing. And then like the back end, and we're going to talk about this a little bit more. People pay a lot of attention to the front end of the mailing list. Like I want traffic. I want subscribers. You know, I want to grow my list to that magical 5,000 point where people want you to come on webinars with them. You know, all of this stuff. And they don't pay attention to the back end. And that's where people have purchased from you. These are people who like you. You need to treat them well too and really segment and make sure that they don't get all the marketing stuff as much that you're giving them even more value over time and that you're just as consistent with them and that you're kind of keeping track of them. You know, so for example, if you sell soap, right, you know that your bar of soap lasts about three months if someone's actually using it. So at two and a half months, why not send them an email saying, hey, I'm going to give you 10% off a new bar of soap because I think you might be running low. And people are like, wow, that person like kept track of me. That's amazing. And that's what technology can do. I mean, it can really help you have this amazing customer service that people think you're like thinking about them all the time, but it's all automated. And that's what's cool about it. It's like you're actually taking care of people because you set it up in advance for them to be taken care of. Yeah, I think that's really smart. And I, I want to go back to what you said about integrity and speaking in your own voice, because I know that sometimes people, you know, are kind of in a rush sometimes. And I do t done for you funnels. And so we're oftentimes, you know, offering a free gift and then doing a nurture sequence after that. And a lot of times that nurture sequence is the thing that is skipped over because we're in such a hurry to get traffic yep. you know, to the initial um, list that, you know, sometimes it's to like love them and leave them. It's like, well, give them all this love and this wonderful free report and then nothing. And then we'll yeah. make an offer after and like, they're not ready to buy because it's just like, you know, all of a sudden you hit them with a sale. And sometimes like these marketers oh. think, or introductory, you know, kind of marketers think, oh yeah, we're going to give them like a, oh, I'm going to make so much money if I, I give them a, like a $9.97, you know, offer. And I'm just like, they are not ready for that. No, and because they don't know you. I mean, they they you're sort of, you. you know, you're getting married on the first date, you know? It's yeah, like, so. <laughs> well, and, and the other thing about that is, you know, it, it's so, and, and I don't, I'm not against this, but, but there's a warning that goes with it. It's like very easy to sort of go to Coach Glue or someplace and buy PLR and it comes with the nurture sequence. 
Yeah. But the, in the nurture sequence, like it, it's so tempting just to plot those messages in there and say, done. But half the time they tell stories that don't belong to you. Me and my five kids, you know, like we're hanging out on the beach in Canada and, you know, like all that. And I'm like, well, yeah, I can't really write that because that's not me. You know, I don't have five kids. Right. <laughs> I'm not in Canada. It's like just opposite middle of, of my life. And so that's the other thing is that, you know, you need to really make sure that you're telling your story and nurturing your community. And, and even with affiliates, you know, like referral programs and people give you the messages to send and they're very well written, you need to rewrite them because chances are, like, especially like I'm thinking with Ellen, we have a lot of crossover on our list. And so if Ellen sent me a message to send and she's sending it to her affiliates and a lot of her affiliates are probably on my list. A lot of them are sending to people on their list, which are also on my list. And that's what happens when big people do huge launches and you get 27 copies of the same email in your email box. It's, and it just makes people want to unsubscribe because you're not providing any additional value. It tells a little pet peeve of mine. <laughs> yeah, just, and, and so that's the other thing, is, is really um, telling your own story and writing things in your own voice is another thing that sets people apart. There aren't any shortcuts. You can't, I mean, that whole, here is a business in a box, you know, plug it in and it will just like make money for you. I wish, I mean, I really wish that were true. I would set up a bunch of businesses in boxes and go spend my time on the beach, but I can't do that. So, you know, it's, it's really that consistency and really telling the story in your own voice. And then finally, not giving up too soon. Because this is a game that is a very long game. And there are so many times that, like, for example, a webinar trying to fill up a group coaching program. And this is like where people want to start always. And it's kind of never the right place because the numbers don't work in your favor. So, okay, if you have a small email list, you might have up to a 50% open rate, but that's like if you know everyone on your list and they're your friends, by the time it gets to any size, you're at 20%, right? And so you have your 20% open rates, you have your list of 500 people, right? 100 people open it, a click-through rate on average is two, three, four percent maybe. So you're already down to like three people coming to your webinar. And then by the time you get to a 50% attendance rate, no one's going to come. I mean, and that's what happens. And that's fine if you expect that. But people think that they're going to have 100 people on their first webinar. And then out of that, you know, like you have 100 people on the webinar. If you sell 20%, that's amazing. Okay, but if you have 10 people on your webinar, maybe you're going to sell one of them. And that's after four or five follow-up messages. That's really hard to fill up a group coaching program like that. So people go through all of it. They set up the webinar. Maybe they dabble in the Facebook ads. Maybe they put all this stuff together. And then at the end of the day, nothing happens and they give up. Instead of doing another webinar and getting better at it and finding better ways of manipulating the traffic and finding better ways of bringing people in, they just stop and there's no follow up and they just keep banging their head against the wall. Some of my clients for like a year, like they would just, they wouldn't do the same webinar again. They do a different one every time. And so they wouldn't get practiced with it. And then they would give up and do a whole different business. I had one client who I had to fire. I was her um, online business manager. And she went through eight different businesses in about a year and a half. Like completely, like a new website, new autoresponders, starting from scratch on the list, like everything. And I finally said, like, you know, as fun as this is, I'm all about helping you build stuff because that's what I was doing at the time. Like, sure, and you're paying me and all that, but this is not serving you. So you need to take some time and go see a mindset coach. Go see a find your passion person and really figure out what you want to do and then come back. And I ran into her at a conference like three years later, and she's like, I really think, Meredith, for firing me because I had to really figure out what I wanted to do. <laughs> I was like, 
there you go. And so that's the other thing is, is you know, don't give up, figure it out, just keep plugging because at the end of the day, almost anything will work. You just need to keep working it. Yeah, I think that's really important that you mentioned that. Uh, it kind of just, um, you know, brought, brought up memories of clients that I've worked with who just don't have the clarity of their niche and what they're offering. And mm -hmm. they, they think that a magic web webinar with, um, you know, no traction on their list or no... It's, the, it's, or, it's, it's you know, honestly... Magically, oh, well, if I have a webinar, people will come to it. Well, well they, they will yeah. in time, but... I think there's, uh, it's sort of like a mirage, you know, like in part of what I do during the day is I work for Link Selling, which is a huge company, 40 people. And, but to look at the launch, you might almost get the impression that it's like two people in their garage putting on this giant thing. And so then when it's just you literally in your garage by yourself without a team of 40 people, it seems like you're not measuring up somehow and that the magic isn't working and it's just that you're not giving it enough time and you're not sticking with it long enough for things to really grow. And so you just need to kind of stick with it and do the background work I mean, get the clarity, Fig get some coaching if you need it, you know, whatever you need to do, but really figure out who your people are and what they really need and how, how you help them to get that. And even if you start out doing one-on-one -on -one work with people, that's a great place to start actually. Because it's a little easier to sell one person on something even if it's more expensive than to sell 10 people on something that costs a little bit less. Volume is really tricky in the beginning and it's where people want to start because it's less of a cost, you know, it's like, oh, well, it's so much easier to sell 197 or 97 or 47 or whatever. But it's really hard to get the critical mass in the beginning. You're much better off finding a client or two and charging them not very much money for private work, but really working with them and building your business that way. And then teaching what you've learned in a group when you've gotten to the point where you don't have time to work with people so much individually. Mm -hmm. It's just in, in 10 years, that's what I have learned. Yeah, yeah. And Having made all of those mistakes. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Well, I mean, we all have. Oh, gosh. Yeah. <laughs> it would be nice if we could just skip to the end. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, 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 so those of you who are new and listening to this, just know that, um, yeah, I've been there. And, and save yourself some time. <laughs> So we did mention a couple of mistakes already, but what would you say is the biggest mistake that people... Oh, lack of follow-up. You know, I mean, and again, it, it goes back to the mythical webinar, right? And I don't know how many times this has happened where you do a webinar and you actually have a fairly successful webinar. You get a good number of people on there and you think everything is going well. People are asking really cool and interesting questions and you're like oh, I'm just going to sell the heck out of this. And then like nobody clicks the buy button right away. And so then the mistake that people make is they go, oh, I'm done. I'm like, no, you've just started. This was just introducing people to it. You need to keep after them, like maybe for weeks, you know, having some urgency, having a follow-up sequence to it so that if – they don't buy right away because, you know, people are listening to the webinar in the background, right? Like they're cooking dinner or like doing 17 other things and they're kind of listening to you and the offer comes up and they're kind of interested, but then right at the moment they can't buy it because they're sort of doing whatever. You need to send them another email and another email and another email. You know, the, the big launches that I've been involved in, it's like literally 20 emails that go out. I'm not kidding, 20 after the webinar. I mean, that's a little annoying. Maybe not that many, but at least making sure that it's really a no. You know, I like for mine to probably send five to seven after. It's just, hey, did you catch this? Do you want to replay? Do you have any questions? Here's a little bit more content that I, you know, I want to go a little bit deeper into this with you. Here's my urgency. You know, here's the deadline. And you need to have a deadline. Like, you can't just have it open forever. 
because then people don't have any urgency to sign up. I don't know how many things I've signed up for on like the last possible minute. Part of it's because I'm in a, a Western time zone. So it really is the last, it's nine o'clock at night, but it's, you know, oh, midnight Eastern. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> I'm getting ready. And, and, you know, because people do pay attention to those, you know, sending those two emails on the last day saying, this is your last chance. Then I'm closing the doors and then I'm going to work with people individually. But even when you're starting out, you know, maybe a better sales tactic is to try to get people on the phone with you have a phone conversation and talk to them about what is your problem? What are your needs? What's, you know, how can I help you? And sort of having a lot of those conversations to figure out where your clients, particularly the people you're attracting are getting stuck because it's different for everybody. I mean, even though I, mean, I don't know Patricia, but I know Ellen, I know, I kind of know you and, and our audiences have very similar issues. But even my audience is a little different from yours, which is a little different from Ellen's, and have slightly different problems, that we're all uniquely slightly more qualified to serve them in that particular thing. And the more you talk to people, like get out from behind your computer and actually like get on the phone, the more you'll learn about that. And the more you'll get a sense of the language and the words that people are using to describe it, you know, email autoresponder versus email list thingy. But literally, you know, that's what people are calling it. And so you need to, you can explain to them what the proper term is, but you need to use their words so that they're not like, oh, she's so technical. I don't understand a word she says. Because I did that in the beginning. I had this horrible class. It was three months and I taught people everything. It's, it's Tuesday. It must be autoresponder day. Okay. So then the next week it's social media and we're going to set up all your social media. And then the next day, and people are like, Meredith, we love you. You have a good heart. You're giving us a headache because it's just too much and too deep. So that's kind of a, another mistake that people make. And then also kind of the obvious ones where you want to test everything to death. You want to send yourself a test email you want to have somebody read it over who's not you. You want to really make it look like it's a real email coming from a real person as much as possible. And broken um, autoresponder codes, just don't do that. Formatting mistakes, you know, things like that. It doesn't have to be perfect because people do make mistakes, but you want it really be careful of things that look like automated mistakes. So that's another one. And then finally segmenting. Like if I am having an event in um, New Mexico, cause that's where I live, I shouldn't be sending it to everybody because everybody isn't necessarily interested in it, especially if it's something going on tomorrow. If it's something in a month, well, okay, maybe people come on out to Albuquerque and hang out with me. That's great. But I, I don't see, yeah, I mean, and, and also if you're sending something specifically to women, don't send it to men. And also as your lists get bigger, people click on things more. And so then you get a real sense of what they're interested in and you can segment them and send them particularly the things that they're interested in. So that's another mistake is that people just send everything to everybody. And I'm surprised that sometimes it's fairly big names where I've purchased their product and they're sending me stuff trying to get me to purchase their product. And I'm like, you should know better than that. You know, like you in particular should know better than yeah. that. You know, it drives well, me especially crazy. Especially if they have Infusionsoft or a database where they yeah, can like, yeah, well, the buyers are. Yeah. We'll do that. You know, like you can set that up with ActiveCampaign. You can even set yeah. that up with MailChimp. I've got AWeber yeah. and I have a separate list for my buyers. And so when I, and usually I do, you know, I, I um, you know, I kind of think about, okay, should this go to everybody? Should this go to, you know, you can exclude. And so I actually exclude sometimes, especially if it's like buyers of, you know, the, that I've already, you know, marketed. Yeah, you know? but I've just been seeing that so much lately. And I'm like, really? <laughs> you know, like, honestly. 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you for, you know, those tips, because I think, you know, a lot of times people get a little bit carried away and excited, you know, like, oh, I have a list. I can email them now. And, and you don't really put necessarily like a lot of thought sometimes into those. I mean, I, I do, but I've definitely been guilty of sending out. Um, oh, well, no, I mean, everything I'm telling you, I mean, and this is what I have to say because yeah. I've done all this, like all of it. And, yeah. and, and it hasn't worked. And, you know, what works is really treating your people really well. Yeah. And it's really important to do that if you can, you know, like just. Yeah, it, it's nice. interesting because sometimes occasionally people and actually sometimes my clients will get my newsletter and they'll reply back as if they thought I was going to write writing to them personally and I was like oh okay well I mean this is just from my nurture sequence or something like that you know uh you know because I have a sequence of recommendations for tech systems and stuff like that and so obviously if they've already chosen the system I'm not going to recommend a different one but uh yeah it, it, it kind of uh, tickles me sometimes when they reply, oh like, yeah oh, they are reading it well, and then it, well, and if people do that then you're doing it right like if people like my sister forever like she finally unsubscribed from my list because she felt like I was tricking her. Oh. Like she'd open up the emails and she'd be like, oh, and, and that's, oh wait, no, this is one of those marketing things. And I'm like, sorry. And so finally she got off of the list because she's not really my target market anyway. I don't know how she got onto the list in the first place. She was just being nice, but she kept getting tricked by the, you know, or when people write you back, say, oh, I can't make your webinar. I'm so sorry. I'll make it next time. That's like so sweet. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I, and that means you're, you're doing it right. It means you're writing in a way that's personable and, and that people are thinking that you're just sending them emails and that's know. perfect. You know? <laughs> that's good. Yeah. They, they're supposed to teach you how to do that sometimes. Yeah. Uh, so where do you think that people are leaving money on the table? With on the back end. Okay. Of, yeah. And, and, and it's really after you've purchased the product, what I see so much, especially if it's a one and done kind of thing, you buy your ebook for 27 bucks. Yay. Okay. And then that, then you don't hear from that person again, ever. Like until they're ready to sell you their next $27 ebook next month. And so you don't hear from them and that's not good. You know, you should be adding consumption emails in there. Oh, hey, you know, I'm, I'm check you bought my email challenge. Are you working the challenge? How's it going? Awesome. You know, do you need more help? What, where are you getting stuck? And like keeping to follow up over a period of not just minutes or not just days, but like even into months, even into years eventually so that you're keeping in touch because people forget about you. And so you need to remind them that you're there, especially your buyers. And so I think that's really where people leave money on the table is in the follow-up because people are so into getting this done as opposed to, um, you know, let's just get this done now. I need to put this all together. And then they, they don't build out the back end of it very well and so that's like number one and then number two is is going back to your customers specifically with offers just for them you know hey vips i know you've purchased something for me in the past i would love to help you with this even more let's go deeper not an upsell immediately after but an upsell in the weeks and months that follow and nobody does that it's just sort of you buy it and you Unless there's a Facebook group with it, you sort of slide away. And then that's kind of the last you hear. And I, and I think it's, it's a problem. And I think it's where people are leaving the money on the table for sure. Hmm. And yeah. sometimes I've even written people back. I'm like, do you have more? I really liked this thing on Google Analytics or whatever, you know. And this is as far as it goes. Do you have, you know, do you? talk about Google Tag Manager anywhere? Can I get something from you on that? Do you do coaching? Even better, will you set the stupid thing up for me because I don't know how to do it? You know, whatever. <laughs> you know. 
Yeah, yeah, I think that's a really good point because sometimes those buyers, I mean, even if they're not ready to buy something from you, maybe they, you know, I get most of my clients from referrals, you know, from existing yep. clients. And I actually, it's not from my marketing, it's not from Facebook ads, it's not even from my, you know, my tech calls and the, the JBIC tech group, you know, it's actually from, you know, the top customers come from existing referrals of existing clients and, and do you <laughs> go after yeah. those referrals at all or do you just sort of let them come to you like do you go after your clients do you have in your autoresponder sequence something asking for testimonials well i don't do you have something really, asking for referrals i i don't automate that just because a lot of times you know i'm emailing my clients back and forth quite a lot and they have questions and stuff and so usually when they praise you know, then I, that's when I ask, you know, I reply to them personally and say, Hey, I'd love a testimony. But how many people yeah. have worked with you that loved you, but didn't actually write that to you? Well, I mean, usually when I ask them personally, they do reply, you know, with yeah, the but, but I'm just, I'm just quickly. You know, yeah. But uh, I, I actually, I mean, that's one thing, the buyer autoresponder, and it, it does take a little bit of technical know-how, you know, just because there is one, um, you know, thing, especially for new customers, because I, I do have sometimes onboarding um, right. problems with new customers. And so I wanted to create, you know, at least from my, my, um, you know, my shopping, which I use WooCommerce, but you know, I, I just haven't had time to set it up, but you know, I've been doing this manually, but when a new client comes on, I like to send them my terms and conditions. I like to send them, you know, kind of a list of like passwords that they need to submit to me and stuff like that. And some of that could be automated. And so it's still on my to-do list. I mean, it's not, right, 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 not right. Done yet, but I mean, those are those type of sequences, you know, um, eventually I will be kind of building out just because like you said, those buyers, I mean, when you run a Facebook ad, it's cold leads. They don't know right. you, they don't like you. If they bought something from you, they already trust you. Right. They like you in most cases, you know, unless they're going to refund. You know? well, and, another, and another way to do it is if, you know, if you're not a service-based provider as much and you are, you know, selling information and courses and things like that, having a course evaluation that people do is a really nice way of building that into your autoresponder. So you can say, hey, what did you think of this class? And so two things are going to happen. You're going to get love letters and hate letters, and they're both valuable, right? So the love letters, you have all these testimonials and say, hey, you know, I would love to give you some more coaching around this. Come and talk to me you know, and we'll, we'll discuss this further. And so that's a great way to get a private client even eventually. But the hate letters are valuable too because you can call, you know, if they want to talk to you about it, let them talk about it, let them rant. You have to be a little thick skinned, but you learn things from that. Like my crazy class that I had that was 12 weeks and I'll teach you everything about everything. I had a hate letter and I got on the phone with the person and she said, you know, you have the heart of a teacher and I know that you really want to teach this, but you're going way too fast. And I didn't understand it. And I don't think anyone else understood it. And I'll go back through it. Like I don't want my money back necessarily, but I, I just want you to know. And so she was coming at it from sort of, she was complaining, but was from a point of being helpful. And that was probably one of the most useful conversations I've had in all of my internet marketing career was this person who really gave me some good help and we parted friends. Like she's like, thank you for getting on the phone with me and thank you for hearing this because I felt like I needed to say it. So we're all good. You know, she didn't go off on Twitter and, and, you know, post things. None of that happened. It was just a good conversation. So asking for feedback is really kind of an important thing that people don't think about with email. You know, they're thinking about getting people to buy stuff and they're thinking about nurture sequences. They're not thinking about encouraging interaction, encouraging replies to emails, saying, hey, you know, hit reply and talk to me about this. Because people are always shocked when they do that because they don't think I exist, I think. They think I'm like a robot or something in space or a chat bot or something. And so they hit reply and they ask me a question and I respond back to them. And they're like, you're a real person. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> I am actually here and I actually want to help you honest. 
And, and so that's another thing that, that you can easily do that will make, give you, I mean, it's leaving money on the table by not interacting with your people and not following up with them. Yeah, yeah. And I think it is good to have, you know, that survey feedback, you know, because I, I also have a course that I teach. And at the very last module, as I'm giving out their lesson, at the top of it, I give them a link to the survey, you know, so it, it gives them some kind of open ended questions, and then also kind of like multiple, you know, where they can just check, okay, what are you interested in next and that sort of thing. And, and usually they don't, uh, they take a little bit of prodding to, to fill out a survey, you know, because people don't really like surveys, but um, it is, it is helpful, you know, and then it's also really great, like when you do get a glowing survey, you know, response, I mean, that's beautiful for when you launch again, you know, and I've used that before and it's all typed out. I don't have to, you know, I don't have to dig for it in my email, which usually exactly. I have to do. Like sometimes I get those testimonials at a time where I'm like crazy. Oh, no. yes. <laughs> where did that email go? I have to like right. you know, go back through it. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean that, though, that feedback is really um, very helpful to get. And then also, I mean, I like how you said have a thick skin because I remember the very first, I think it was a telesummit that I did with replays. And there was somebody who bought the replays and it was like at a dirt cheap price. And then she asked for a refund. And, and I was like, lady, like, you know, I've gone out of my way to help you and you, you know, cause it was also an existing client and I actually ended up kind of phasing her out just because I was just like, it was good information for me to know, okay, well, this person really isn't in my target audience. And so, you know, if they're unhappy with it or if they just wanted to go shopping in my pocketbook, you know, Oh, I didn't want right. to spend that, you know, whatever, $27, I forget exactly even how much it was, but you know, and, and, you know, but I remember kind of taking it personally at first, but then realizing, okay, you know what, this is actually not the direction of the ideal client that I need to be working with. And so it gave right. me some clarity as, you know, and I, it was a hard lesson to learn because of course you want to please everybody, but you're not going to, I mean, not right. everybody belongs on your list. No. And, and, and the thing with that is, is you get good feedback and you get the people who don't belong off. Yes. And that's important too. And, and that's something that people are hesitant to do because they want that number. You know, they're chasing the number. I want this many thousands or this many hundreds or this many. But if you have a bunch of people on your list that are never going to open an email from you again, what good is it to keep sending them emails again and again and again and again and again? Like there's no point in that. And so you need to take them off because you want your deliverability and your open rate to be higher. So more emails will actually get to the people, their intended recipients. So if you have a bunch of deadwood on your list and you're not segmenting and you're sending everything out to everybody, then Gmail and the ISPs pay attention to that. And so then your deliverability rate goes down. So it's really important to kind of pay attention and as people are unengaged, go through every three months or so and if someone hasn't opened an email from you, send them a little note saying, hey, is this goodbye? Do you never want to hear from me again? Okay, fine. If you do, click here. I'll happy, I'll send you an opt-in, I'll send you something. But just, you know, keeping things kind of clean is gonna help your actual community get your emails better. Yeah. Yeah. So what would you say is the best way to get better at email marketing? Because I get this question. I have clients. Of course, I do not watch it, so, uh, and that's primarily what I do, although I teach as well. Um, but a lot of times my clients will come to me and say, you know, I don't like writing, you know, what do I do? I need a list. And I'm asking them, I mean, that's actually one of the number one reasons that stalls a launch they don't have any copy. Um, so what did they do? <laughs> well, so there, there's, there's the long way and the short way of this, right? Yeah. So, so the short way is to go hire a copywriter and have someone write your copy for you. Yes. And that's usually what I tell them to do. But I mean, I mean really, because there are people who love to do that yes. and they'll write copy for you all day long. And it's a little expensive because there's a lot that goes into it. It's not just banging out an email. You know, they have to really get to know your audience. They have to really, you know, get to know 
who you are and all of that stuff in order to write in your voice and to do it well. So, you know, hiring a copywriter is not inexpensive. The other thing to do is really pay attention to your own inbox, right? And if you get an email and you read it and you're like, oh, wow, I love what that person just wrote. It made me want to buy this thing that I know I don't even need, but it sucked me in. Save that. You know, just keep saving things in a file. It's called a swipe file. Just keep putting stuff that like tickles you into that file because then when you're stuck, you, you don't want to copy something word for word, but you can definitely copy the structure of it or copy the idea. Or if they're writing about hot air balloons, you can write about hot air balloons, but in relationship to your product and, and, and how you do it. And so really paying attention. I mean, some people who are really diehard copywriters, and this works, it sounds really weird, is that you can actually handwrite the emails out. Like take someone who's really good at it and just write it out on a piece of paper what they wrote and it sort of puts it into your mind so that next time you're writing it, parts of it will come back. And if you do that enough, you get a sense of the rhythm and the flow and all of that. And then finally, if you're really stuck, use templates, you know, but adjust them. Don't just use them. Yeah. But, yeah. But start with the template and then, and then just sort of rewrite it so that it sounds more like you. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's why, I mean, a lot of times I do send templates to my clients um, from good, you know, conversion copy. And, and it's funny sometimes when they write back to me and they, they haven't customized things, you know, cause uh, you know, for example, uh, Rob Boyette, who uh, was a tech guru yeah. for many years on the JVIC calls, um, who now, you know, has his own successful uh, business coaching uh, business and does that, you know, kind of to his own list. But um you know, he says, holy cow, like the phrase, holy cow. Yes. And I don't ever say that. I mean, I, holy cow, I, I never. Yeah, say that. yeah. I'm it not that Midwestern or whatever, but yeah. About his templates. He's just like, okay, so if you don't say, holy cow, take that out of the, t you know, take that out. I mean, it's not going to be something that resonates, you know. Well, I, and some people, like, some PLR people have, like, Jimmy Brown, like, has all these acronyms. Yes. And so when I see things with acronyms, I'm like, I know where that came from. <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I know that we do have a free gift for people today. I always like to give people free things, especially if they can't really listen to the whole replay. You know, they can always just get the free gift and the clip notes version of all this. So um, I'm going to go ahead and post in the chat, but um, techdoneforyou.com forward slash. Yeah, it's my playbook. It's sort of my collection of checklists and, and things to just make this easier. Because I think people get so overwhelmed with, oh my gosh, there's so much I need to do. I've just made lists and you can just go through, check out the playbook, check stuff off the list and, and make some real traction in your email marketing. And so something that, and then I have, um, when she signed up for that, you'll be invited to join um, an email marketing challenge. And that's if you really want to devote a month to it and kind of go through boot camp and get a task to do every single day. You don't have to do it every single day. Like I don't come after you or anything if you don't. But when I ran it before, the people who did really had some good list growth going on and really had some good things happening. And so that is going to be offered and it's fairly inexpensive. And so that's something that you also could think about. Yeah, and I love, I, I appreciate that you kind of have this very, you know, it affordable <laughs> you know it's yeah. very affordable you know to do the challenge and, and boot camp i would say is probably a uh you know a gentle <laughs> you know it's more gentle than boot camp i mean it's you know I yeah think no i mean i'm not like yeah you know, it, into, but, like email oh, but it is intense because it is a task a day right right but you can decide you're going to take two months to do it two or three and just sort of work through it on your own pace. Yes, yes, so that's good, yeah. So uh, so you guys, um, techdoneforyou.com forward slash Meredith Gift, that's spelled M-E-R-E-D-I-T-H, G-I-F-T, and I, I will go ahead and um, send out the replay with that link so that you can get it at any time. Of course, these 
interviews at the replays stay up so don't worry about that going down it's gonna always you know be there for you if, uh, you know but I'll listen to it in the next week or it will go yeah, I mean, like if you if you don't you know I think sometimes because I'm actually still sending even Rob's you know a replay information out to people just because you know sometimes like we're sitting at our desk or whatever even like I listen to a lot of things when I'm driving and I just don't have time to sign up for it that minute but I will be sending out those links for folks um yeah so um do you have any kind of I know that you know sometimes people need to work with you or talk to you uh you know because I know that you of course after doing this for over a decade you know there's more than right. just, you know the playbook that they can learn from yes so, um so how, how does that work um I do offer a clarity call it's like a brainstorming call and I'll talk to you for you know a half hour and really get to know you and really give you my best resources sometimes that's come hang out and play and coach with me and we'll build stuff together sometimes it's no actually you need someone just to do this for you go talk to gina sometimes it's i need a powerpoint go talk to ellen you know it, it just sort of it, i'll i'll listen and what i'm really good at is coming up with resources for people and I love to do it. So um, hop on the call with me and we'll talk about that and we'll figure out where you are and what you need and we'll go from there. Yeah, and I think that's really valuable to have a clarity call just because, uh, you know, like you said, we are real people. It was funny, I was watching, um, I think it was an optimized press webinar about how to build a membership you know site with optimized member and it was so funny because there was this kind of like you know chat moderator guy in the background and he all of a sudden like towards the end started sharing his screen and there were like all these people in the comments saying oh my gosh she's a real person <laughs> you know it was just like it made me laugh because he's like yes i'm a real person yes. <laughs> i'm a real person you know it just sometimes i think when we we do this email marketing it's like it just seems very nebulous like oh right list you haven't heard especially if you have a cold list i mean I, that happens i actually know some business owners who were very very successful with their funnel initially but then they let their list go cold and then they're just like how do i email my list now and i'm just like you just have to rip off the band you just and have to do it, it and whatever <laughs> happens happens right yeah because yeah. if you ever want to offer them something again i mean who cares if you have thousands of people on your email list if you you know they don't remember you anymore so and it's just yeah so it's it's interesting you know kind of when we get into this email marketing um game i would say you know just uh, i mean it is about people i mean it, it's just like um you know somebody had uh, replied to an email and i had met her in person you know many years ago and I was shocked that she was still on my list but she was yeah, yeah. So it's, it's good when that happens Oh, absolutely. And, and you'll be surprised. Like every once in a while I get emails from people that I met in other contexts who ended up on my list and I'm like, wow, you're on my email list. That's cool. Yeah. So, you know, and, and I know we didn't talk about this too much, but I know there's kind of some, you know, spammy behavior, um, you know, that uh, sometimes, and, and I get this question a lot sometimes, you know, people who are doing their very first JV launch or something like that. And then, you know, their, their very first webinar and they're just like, Oh, I met all these people in a networking event. They gave me their business cards. Like, can I like just put them on my list? And oh no, 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 no. Like, you know, and I'm like, did you ask them? You know, <laughs> did you? Well, but that's what you need to do yeah. is, is, is a trick I learned from somebody is you say, Hey, you know, I send out tips periodically. Would you like to be on my list? And they say, yes. And so then what you do is you fold over the corner of the business card. So you have it, and then when you get back, you can, you know, sort it out and put them on your list and all of that. But no, you can't just gather up cards and put them in your database. Yeah, and there is this thing, I mean, there's laws. It's illegal. Yeah, there's law, there's family. It's also just not good. I mean, it yeah, just Yeah, yeah, but it's also kind of annoying, because I know that I have, you know, distributed my business card before at, at a networking event, and people have just assumed that I wanted to be on their list, and I was just like, and then all of a sudden, I appeared on their list, and um, actually, I think an author did that to me once, so I was just like, I don't even know what your book is, or, I mean, I just 
barely remembered who she was. And then, you know, I was a little bit ticked off that she did that, you know? So it's almost like, you know, having a good um, in-person interaction with them and then, you know, just kind of forcing them onto your list into a certain yes. path to get to know you. It's like they, you know, it would almost be better just to have a conversation first and then invite them either to work with you to get yes. on a list or, um, you know, po possibly, you know, be referred to another resource if, you know, it's not a fit. But, you know, it's just like sometimes we kind of like skip or try to skip over or skip to the end and you have to realize, okay, you know, these are people, you know, especially... Yep met them in person like it, it's a relationship so um you know if you're just kind of assuming that they want to be on your list like it, you kind of have to tread lightly and, and I do say you know because it's not like if you give them an opt-out link you know there is kind of a way to segment it in your email um so that um you know just for instance you know I have a template you know that sometimes I, I recommend to my my people would do a lot of live networking, you know, because of course they'll get the, the verbal consent, but unless they're really organized, you know, with the, the business right. cards, I mean, they may not remember. And so, you know, sometimes we collect those names or we have a, um, have them sign up, you know, you can right. do like a sign up sheet and stuff, which is written consent. Um, you know, then we can import that into the autoresponder, but segment it. So they get this, you know, not just the run of the mill, um, right. gift, but we get, you know, we give them maybe a message that says, it was great meeting you at XYZ event. And, you know, I just wanted to stay in touch. You know, if you don't want to hear from me, no worries. Here's the link to, you know, whatever. I mean, it's like, you kind of have to customize that message. Oh yeah. Yeah. Like, Rather right? than just. Yeah. So yeah, no, that's, that's important. And the more, again, it's segmenting and it's customizing and, and the more you can segment and customize the better and the larger your list gets kind of the easier that gets because you can yeah. slice it really. If you have a small list, you end up with really small slices. And so that gets to be a lot of time creating um, some email programs like active campaign will do some clever things with merges and conditional parts of an email mm -hmm. so that oh if they live in Albuquerque include this paragraph and if they don't mm -hmm. include this other one instead so you need to look at your different autoresponders too to see what it does mm -hmm. because they all seem to do different tricks and so you just got to find the one that does the tricks you want for the price you can pay and kind of you know go from there yeah yeah and so and actually do you still do active campaign um yeah. Work for people. Okay. So yeah. occasionally I don't tend to actually use active campaign as one of the systems that I support, at least with my company. We, we support quite a few other responders, but right. well, I mean, don't have a certification for sure. So I, I I'll, I'll, uh, sometimes have people to refer uh, out um, who need active campaign help, but um, yeah, you know, it's good to know. And I know that it is a good system, you know? It, yeah. Well, I, 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 I started in Infusionsoft okay. mm -hmm. and ended up in active campaign because it did as much, if not more of what I needed personally than Infusionsoft did for about a third of the price. But again, everybody's business is different. It's true. And what they need is different. And, you know, and so you, I, I can't say, well, everyone should just come to active campaign because it's not true. It just depends on what particularly you're trying to do. Yeah. And that's kind of a pet peeve, you know, of mine as well, just because um, I recommend systems. I'm an affiliate of some systems. I'm not an affiliate of other systems. Um, but I, I always like to kind of get to know the system a little bit yeah. before I recommend it to people, you know, because I don't think there is a one, one side. No, there isn't. And, and, you know, and it really actually kind of irritated me when somebody posted in a group, they're just like, oh, well, this system does everything and everyone needs it. And I was just like, that's fraud. <laughs> you know, it's just like not everyone yes. needs it. Did you even ask them what they needed? You know, so uh, I don't know. I, I think the mama bear kind of came out a little bit. I was just like, you know what? I don't think, you know, just because you're affiliate, you should just be spraying your affiliate link everywhere, you know? Um, you know, so it was, I, I had to be a little bit careful how I said it, you know, because I tried, you know, to still be nice. But, um, you know, because I am an affiliate of systems and I do understand that, you know, sometimes people do want to get a commission. Um, and they're genuinely, you know, um, endorsing something. And I think that's fine. I mean, there's nothing wrong with right. that. But I think there also is a distinction between, you know, sharing a resource out of like, 
love and, you know, uh, guidance. And then also kind of being like a sharp type affiliate where you're yeah. trying to, you know, trying to get the sale and, you know, yes. it doesn't matter. They just need infusion to because you're going to get, you know, that cruise. Well, or because, because or infusion is yeah. to sponsoring the, co- the conference and they, yeah, need- yeah. I mean, that stuff to- bothers me just a yeah, little bit. Well, and, that's, and that's, and that's where I come from with people too, is everybody's business is different. And so some people, mailer light is really where you should be. And some people, it's MailChimp. And some people, it's a Weber. And some people, it's, you know, and it just depends on particularly what you're selling and what your business model is. Yeah. And so if, if, you, if anybody wants to get on the phone with me just to talk autoresponders, I'm happy to do that. The only one I'm affiliated with right now is Active Campaign, but that might not be what I recommend to you. So it just depends on what you need. So. Yes, very good. Well, uh, you know, it is, is nice to have, you know, a fellow, you know, techie and also online business manager. I know, uh, like all three of us actually here uh, are very tech savvy. So it's uh, kind of an anomaly that we're all <laughs> all here today. But uh, I will share that link again. So techdoneforyou.com forward slash Meredith GIF. I do encourage people to, you know, go ahead and download that, you know, just because, uh, you know, it's just a quick recap of all of this. And, and, you know, even if you don't have a list and you're just kind of learning it to begin with, like, I also notice, you know, it's just like all those mistakes that we talked about in the beginning. Right. You it's can save painful. yourself two years by listening it's to this painful webinar. when you actually yes. make those mistakes, you know, because you're paying for your autoresponder in some cases, yep. you're making these mistakes, you know, people are unsubscribing or, you know, worse off. I mean, you kind of start something and you don't finish it. And like you said, I mean, like you kind of just like, oh, it's not working after the first try. And then, um, you know, you've been paying for, I mean, cause a lot of times people end up just keep on paying for their auto Oh, sure. Sure. Years and years and years. And, and if it's an expensive one, one, if it's the $300 yeah. a month thing. Yeah. That, especially infusion. <laughs> like you don't want to sit on infusion soft and not use it. You know, that's. And I know so many people yeah. who, you know, back when I was an infusion soft consultant, that was the case. Yeah you know, a lot. And so that's why I say really make sure and, and, and don't be afraid to change because, you know, something might be working for you today and then tomorrow your business model changes or your list gets bigger or whatever. And don't be afraid to move on to the next thing and, and keep, you know, building as you go. So don't be afraid to start with what's going to meet your needs kind of minimally and then grow from there. But then on the other hand, I caution you, don't get something that doesn't meet your needs that you have to set up 20,000 little zaps with Zapier and like all these crazy things to make it work because that is going to actually cost you more time and money than just getting what you needed in the first place. So yes, And those of you non-techies, you're not sure what Zapier is. Zapier like connects different programs. So like if you have AWeber and PayPal, Yes. You can say, oh, if someone buys something in PayPal, add them to this list in AWeber. Yes. Which is an amazing thing when it works, and it works most of the time, but sometimes it doesn't. And it gets tricky because PayPal only wants to talk to so many different programs at once. Mm. And so things can get into deeper and deeper levels of complication. It's maybe just easier to buy something that works. Yes, yes, it's true. Yeah, it's uh, it's almost a whole another conversation that we can. Yeah, have. that's a whole other webinar for another time. You know? <laughs> uh, well, we we have about two minutes left. I'm going to go ahead and unmute Ellen, hopefully, because um, she, she just said yes. She's been she she, she, she lasted through the whole yeah. webinar. Yay! Yeah. Thank you, Ellen. Thank you for attending. Do you have any takeaways, questions? Uh, so I wanted to say I have a client who uh, does positioning messaging for small corp and middle sized yes. corporations. And uh, so the thing that you said at the beginning about consistency is, is just one of his main things. You know, your, yes. your positioning message has to be unique, has to be important. And once you find out what it is, consist, you know, you just repeat it over and over again. So I just wanted to confirm that kind mm-hmm. of thing. And I wanted to thank you, Meredith, because uh, I haven't figured, I haven't gotten it to totally work yet, but I've been playing with, I call it Zapier because they call them Zaps, but I don't know. Anyway, uh, I've been playing with it this past week in testing MailerLite because even though it integrates very well with five things, my sixth thing, which is my, which is my membership software, 
I, it's, it's getting very complicated. But anyway, you were the one who, you, you spent an hour with me, got it going over, whatever it was. Yeah. When it first happened. So then after that, I was able to do yeah. something. It was really exciting. And um, yeah, so, you know, hopefully it'll work. I have all the little pieces there. I am excited about Mailer Light because it does things that AWeber doesn't do. Uh, several sp specific things that a and one of them has to be is awesome. It just is old. It's old. Know. Yes, exactly. It's and, old. And that's that's the issue. Is that it is solid. I mean, it's and rock it solid too. You know, when you but talk, it, it is. It, 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 it's like grandpa. You know. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know. <laughs> but it's tried and true. I mean, it's a good. Yeah. Option. I mean, if but, but yeah, if you're looking for solid, solid. Yes. You know. Yeah. So anyway, I, I mean, they're starting to go into tags, but they're doing it very slowly. You know, it's taking them years yes. uh, to, you know, do a little piece here and a little piece there. And I think that it's because they want it to stay solid, solid and they test it really well. But there, there's just some things that it doesn't do. And one of them has to do with segmenting that you were talking about. So a specific thing that I can't do in AWeber is when somebody finishes an, a, an autoresponder sequence. We talked about this move before. Them yes, to, yeah. another, to another list so that they're not getting my daily emails that you mentioned I send out all through the autoresponder thing when yeah. I'm just trying to nurture them. And, and, and people unsubscribe because of it. And I've had this desire to figure this out for like a couple of years. And I, I, it, everything was more expensive, more expensive, because there are a couple of add-ons for AWeber that you can use, and they cost... $30, $40 a month, and I didn't want to add to it. But it's really interesting because to test a new email service with everything, it's not so much what it does. I mean, you have to see what it does, you know, and, and test that, but all of the integration. So, you know, I had to integrate it with Digital Access Pass with, um, I have something called Post Gopher, which, which yeah. you know what that is? Yeah, so people can get a PDF of a blog post, but it's adopted. That actually integrates directly with Mailer Light. And I had to do it with Thrive Leads, you know, and I had there's just so many things that you you yes. have to realize that you have to connect it with. Uh, yeah. And so it, I just had, this all has to be very systematic and written out and doing it. And of course you run into problems, so then you have to go tech support and it's taking weeks to, to actually just test it. And I'm up to the last thing, which is, <laughs> so, you know, still working on that one. But it, it is amazing, the, that, that kind of process. And it is wonderful when you find something that does what you need it to do yep. uh, you know, for a reasonable price. And I think you're right about the age, is that the newer ones that, you know, this is disconnect because on the other hand, when something's brand new, you know, you, this is the greatest new thing, you know, and everybody's selling it. And I refuse to buy anything like that because I want something that's old enough that it's gone through its, you know, baby, baby stage. But on the other hand, the older things don't have some of the newer features. So you, you, I think you need to find something in the middle. It's been around for a year or two, but yeah. you know, so it's it's and it, they're updating it regularly. And you never know what's going to end up succeeding when you see the, these new offers, and, and that's going to be supported over a long period of time because right. support is so important. The oh yeah, they're, they're giving you support. They're answering your questions, and that they're continually upgrading. So, I mean, Digital Access Pass is a good example. They have twice, this is amazing, written code just for me. <laughs> and, you know, that's the kind of support that you need. So it's, you know, yeah. So anyway, yeah, it was great. Everything you said, I agreed with it. And this thing about, I wrote down, I wrote down a little thing about putting a course evaluation in an autoresponder, a good, good idea. And what you were saying, Gina, I think when you finish, you finish a, a project with somebody, you send them a little evaluation form. Mm -hmm. And that way, it, it's same like a course evaluation. It's like what I do when I finish coaching somebody. You know, you give them an evaluation. And so that's when you can ask for testimonials and, and references. Mm -hmm. and, and you could go back to your, your previous people if you haven't done that and say, uh, I just uh, wanted to see if you have any new needs, you know, needs again. And would you mind telling me how, what you thought about it? And do you know of anybody else? You know, I'm filling up my schedule, my calendar and do you know of anybody else that you could refer to me? So that's a little project that should bring in some new business. 
Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Ellen, for those takeaways and those techie <laughs> tips. I know some yeah. people were like, oh my God, I just said like, yeah, don't be scared. I mean, that's <laughs> the Start with what you need. Um, you know, Ellen's been doing this for a while, so she's had time to have lots of different things to connect. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So any parting words for us, Meredith? Thank you so much for joining us. I know this is like a huge topic, you know, but it's really not that scary. And I, I'm so glad you have, you know, that, that gift for folks, you know, to kind of just even dip your foot in if you're remotely interested in this. Any parting takeaway? Um, just, just get started and keep going. I mean, really, that's what I would say is don't be consistent. Just keep at it. And you'll get better and your results will get better and your customers will be happier. Yes, we like to keep the customers happy. <laughs> okay, well, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. And I will be setting out the replay if anybody didn't catch this live, but uh, thank you so much, Meredith. And thank you, Ellen. Thank Bye. you. Bye.